trainer for this VizRT advanced training course. In this module, we will be looking at the dynamic scene and the graphics channel. They are both found here in the media assets section. You've got your Geom plugins, your container plugins, your shader plugins, your scene plugins, and your media assets. This is a new feature of 3.7 to put them here. As well, you'll find that the graphic channels are these new blue ones right here, of which there are up to 16. And the dynamic scene is over here in the texture in the container plugin. So the graphics channels are brand new to 3.7 and above. And essentially, they are a much lighter way of rendering alternate aspects of other scenes in your main scene, other layers within layers. They were sort of invented to reimagine the way we already do front layer and back layer and middle layer. The problem with front layer and back layer, if you use them, is there's only three of them, or two, front, one, two, three. But with the graphic channel, now you have up to 16 different layers to work with, and that's how you treat them. As a designer, I treat them much in the way After Effects people may treat comps or nested within comps. So I'll do designs and then I'll have these uh, graphic channels or the dynamic texture working in my scene, rendering out a nice little graphic. And I'm gonna show you some examples of that. So as I said right here, we have two examples. Up here I'm using the dynamic scene and I have a source which I've already created. So I made these sources back here. Uh, the globe here, I'll open that up in a sec. And as you see, I'm playing them out here and with the dynamic scene, it's just a matter of dragging the sources into these areas. So as you see by the texture, you treat it like a texture. But a little button here up here, I just switch over to dynamic and I can press play, I can stop, I can press play. Oops, let's go back there, press play. And we also have the ability to sort of change this to RGB alpha. So now I'm kicking out that key signal in the back. Um, and I've got different resolutions I can work with here on height and width. This is the sort of thing you would do to maximize your performance with dynamic scene. We also have camera IDs, and this is also, so if I'm staying local, let's watch this, I'll show you this. I'm gonna remove this. Now let's go back here. And main layer, let's see if that catches it. you'll see that this dynamic scene first initial view is with the existing camera that we're in right now. So I can switch this up to different cameras and see it's rotating around. And I've used this sort of feature where I'm working with the inside camera to push an object or a scene way down in negative uh, 1000, for example. And I'll put that on camera too and I'll play that object back up in the main camera in one of the dynamic scenes. I've used that for a uh, interesting widget for a weather network in Canada. Anyways, let's start off with our exercises and we'll look at the graphic. Uh, play, let's go. So the first exercise is to create a lower third using that dynamic scene plugin to bring the spinning globe back in as part of the plate graphic. I've got the example, okay. So watch what I do here. I'm going to go and create my lower third. Very simple, very clean lower third. I nest everything in a main top level folder and do all my positioning that way. As you see, I'll just have back plate. And we'll get that nice material.
here, I'm going to actually put another layer on top of this. And this is going to be my, my dynamic scene layer. So I know that my source scene is going to be, it'll do the seven here and I'll match that purple, the orange. So I go and grab, I go to my media assets, I grab the dynamic scene, and I pop that on there like that. And you see it's taking the first camera, which when right now is just looking like itself. This little tab pops up, so now I go over here, well, first go back to texture, I've got to drag the scene into this element right there. I'm going to drag that in like that, and there you see the scene is starting to appear. Press play. Now I want to sort of bring up, make that a bit white, and I'm going to make this, bring in the, the key signal, RGB with alpha, cool. Now I can treat this like a regular texture. I start scaling it up. And I think I've moved down a little bit like that. Maybe put too much, there we go. Now, of course, I've got all this extra stuff right there, so I think what I might do is actually make this right aligned, push this over this way, and crop my geometry. So there we have this right there. There's a little bit more right there. And, of course, because it's a texture and geometry, I can apply all the other traditional bells and whistles, make this a bit faded. And maybe even give this, uh, let's see what happens. this looks like as an ad. Nah, it's a bit too much. No, a bit too much. Yeah, there we go, it's quite nice. Now, I was grouped this, make this my graphic stuff, my graphic layer. And let's get a font. And here we go. So I'm going to now give this an animation. So we'll use this as the key reveal. Put a mask on that. Take this to look at this. This will pop out. There we go. So that's a pretty quick example of how a dynamic scene can work for you. And of course, if I don't want the scene, I can always go back and add a new scene like this. So now I've got the globe there, and I'll reposition this. So now we're going to look at the graphics channels. As I said, there's, there's more, than, more than three or four, there's 14 of them, this is a new feature. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I want to wrap a graphic channel around a cube. So let me go grab my cube. And we've got media assets. I'm going to grab graphic channel one. It's already viewing. If I click on here, see this little feature up here? My tree. My source search and my media assets are all now sourced up here. If I go to my texture, look at one, you'll see I've already got one in there right there. And my tree. And now I can treat this much the way I can treat any image. I can make this in vertex. And I'm going to scale things up a little bit like this. And uh, zoom up like that. And I'm going to then press play. So I press play on the, on the texture part. So if I go here and I press play, there we go. I got that playing now. So now I'm going to want to make another cube. I'll drag down the cube here. And I'm going to make this one a bit bigger. So you see that the scale is going to go, oops. Oops, yeah, there we go, 101, and 101, so 
and I want to play with the idea of having another graphic channel on that as well. And two, if I go to two texture, is taking this uh, source, I'm going to grab this source, and there we go, and go back to the uh, go back to the tech, take the tree, this, make that vertex, and I'll play with the scale for a little bit. And I think both these can do for a nice little bevel. There we have a nice way of sort of nesting and comping in a couple different graphic channels, similar to the dynamic scene. Don't get me wrong. However, you have multiple. You have, you have a much much uh, improved performance uh, with these, which is one of the key benefits. I'm just going to have a little, get a little tricky right now. Make this one or two. Show you something else that's beneficial. I like to use my little. Where's my flare? Where's my lens? There we go. Here's my favorite little features. Give this, make that reflection, and all right. That's a glassy sheen right there. Is that cool? But you know, before with the previous uh, dynamic scene, what I couldn't do was a shader. So I think I'm gonna now apply a shader to this. And you'll see now the shader will work just great. This is the nice thing about this as well. So there are definitely advantages over the graphic channels over dynamic scene, which you should definitely consider. So that was it for the graphic channels and the dynamic scene. I hope this, this was informative and uh, we'll take a look at this later on. Bye-bye.